Professor Anton, hello. First of all, let me tell you, one, I entirely accept mm, to first order that life is a gift. Okay? Totally. You're not dealing with Gary trying to argue, no, any way of seeing life is a gift, fuck that. No, not at all. I believe, blessed, love to be a human. Agree, humans is artist specialists. Okay, now, I am not intoxicated, but I had four hours of sleep last night. It's 2 20 a.m. in the morning right now. I've been working on a presentation. I am staying up a little later because I'm sort of self-indulgent about winding down, you know, after I work a lot. Now, the quality of the presentation may suffer, but I don't think the quality of the content is going to be imperceptible. But maybe that's a predictive thing, so we'll see. But, so I'm not going to call you on like, if you, I, I don't want you to feel self-conscious of like, oh, Piero's going to want me to respond. I won't respond, but he's going to bitch at me, or I will respond because he's going to bitch at me. I'm not going to bitch at you if you don't respond. However, if you come up with a video saying, nobody can give me any decent answers about my thing about the animals and the, and the gift, then I will call you on that. Okay, because this is going to be a decent answer. Okay, first of all, what is the point of your distinction? You already admitted everything is unique and has its own special place. Seems to me the point of your distinction is that the gift is for humans. The gift is for humans because animals have unfinished brains. What? Come on. Your sensibilities, to me, I interpret your sensibilities to be such that I do not understand how you could say something like that because you must know our brain is unfinished. Okay, you said all the material arguments, but that's one you seem to miss taking into account. Our brain is unfinished. We're unfinished. Okay? We're not fully aware. You're like, we don't know how this full awareness gets. We do not have full awareness. The animals all think they've got full awareness too. Okay, the gift is life. And you say that it's undeserved. And I, I agree again metaphorically with you. It's undeserved. We should be thankful. And I love to be a human. It's my favorite animal to be. If I had the power to, to, to portal my mind into other animals, yeah, I'd spend time as an eagle, I'd be a coyote, I'd try being a hermit crab, I'd, I'd play. But only if I could come back to being human. I want to be human. I enjoy being human. And though it is a gift, I take some credit. I've given that gift to myself if I am everything that's led to me. I am the genealogy. You know what I mean? It was me and my great-great-grandfather that led, you know, in the same sense that it was me that was a six-year-old child. Okay, so it was me that was a sperm and an egg. It was me that was my mom and my dad. It was me that was my grandparents. It was me that was my great-grandparents. You know what I'm saying? We had to struggle to survive. We earned this survival. So one of the special things about human beings is that, no, we earned this survival. We made this choice. Other animals alive just as long of us as us ended up as ticks. Okay? They might like that lifestyle. I assume they do in some sense. That's how they ended up there. I like a thinking lifestyle. That's why I ended up here. So I take some credit, but I do believe it's a gift. You and I agree fully on it being a gift. So we, even though we have some differences, like I stay 50 miles away from any Aristotelian uh, causation, okay, those categories of causation are good to teach students, but I don't, I don't consider them useful. I consider them uh, confusing, distracting. You know, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a false categorization to me. There's truth in them. You can learn from considering them but only really to get past them and have kind of a better consideration. Now, I'm not saying I've broken down the, the ideas of causation the same way. It's more that I'm saying I don't think they should break down. I think causation breaks down like a lot of things in, in reasoning where it's your own personal criteria. It's your own personal concept of whether this cause is, is an efficient cause or a final cause and so on and so forth. And of course, I entirely reject any teleology. So, I mean, final causes, I don't know. But anyway, forget about that. Okay. You say that there's this full scope and this full awareness. We don't have that. That's the thing. So what is the purpose of this distinction? You're trying to say that we have a gift of life, but a lizard doesn't. There's these American chameleons, I think they're originally from uh, Florida, 
but whatever. They're in Hawaii as well. You can buy them in pet stores. I, I had some when I was younger until I said, I can't buy these things. They treat them too terrible in the pet store. They're in these aquariums and, you know, 20% of them are just dead in there and stuff. They just, and they're $5 pet. They don't treat them well. So I did not want to contribute to that industry. But they're great lizards. Now, you know, I, here they live wild. And, well, not here because I'm in Austin, but in Hawaii they live wild. And they spend their day in the sun looking at things thinking. They don't have a lot of this day-to-day -day stereotypical idea we have of animals of, no, of course it's not fun to be an animal. No, it's fun to be an animal. They lie in the sun, they, they absorb, they, they are aware of what they care about, and I like being a human better because I like thinking. I think everything over, you know, like like this presentation I'm, I'm writing. Very hard for me not to go off on interesting tangents. I've got a s period of time, and I've got to stick to it. You know, and I don't want to stick to it the way I do uh, videos where, oh, I see it's almost 10 minutes. Okay, uh, wrap up. You know, I've got to put the whole thing in there. So it's a much more planning, right? Okay. So the thing is, and I like being able to do that. That's a human thing. I agree. We have some special characteristics. But there's nothing fundamental. And it's certainly not like, I mean, to me, I, I respect your opinion. But, and I especially respect your opinion that it's a way for you to embrace your life. You know, maybe you have to think of yourself as a special animal and embrace your life. Fine, do that. Later on, you can think of yourself as not a special animal once you've embraced your life. So, since you've embraced your life, I'm kind of suggesting, let's move to this other point. Because all of these animals have a joy of perception. You know, you know, talk about the historicity and the, the uh, what, did you, what was the time, time awareness, you used some other term, sorry. But it was a good term. And by the way, I don't mind at all terms, the, the terms you use, the technical terms you present. I, I appreciate that part of you, actually. That, that was no part of my complaint before. But anyway, that time awareness, look, that's also, that's related to the fact that we will kill a whole species of animals just to kill it, to get rid of it. What other animal does that? A few, you could see some, mostly other primates, but I, there's some animals that have that attitude because their territorialism has got to that. But wait a second, no, that's territorialism. They'll kill every animal in their territory. They don't go out and like, I must kill every single one. And we obviously have, I mean, we have no relatives for six million years in our genetic history. Looks a lot like we killed everything, you know, that was remotely like a human wanted to clear that out, that space. Okay, so along with this beautiful memory of where you came from, you know, and also I see, I don't think it's a matter of talking Labrador. I don't think they talk, I, I accept that they probably don't have a concept of wondering where was their grandfather came from. But they have the seeds of it, man. They have the seeds of it. They have the seeds of it because they know who their mother is and to a certain extent, they don't consider it as Genesis or that's my guess, but they know somehow there's, she's a source, you know. And, and they experience that, and from that is, comes our kind of perceptions of this stuff. So I don't think there's a fundamental difference, but there certainly are threshold differences where, as I was saying, I like to be a human. I'm glad that I'm a human. I think it's special to have this frontal lobe evolved. But if I was an eagle, I'd probably think, well, no, it's special to have wings and really good eyesight. Okay. But I'm not making an argument that that means that we're not special. I still feel like this is the special animal I want to be. I agree. But the thing is, again, once again, our brain is not finished. So, you know, in the sense that they had the seeds for what we have accomplished mentally, all we have is the seeds for what our, hopefully, if we survive, descendants have mentally. You know, and that's where the, the fundamental of trying to say that humans have a gift. But a spider doesn't. The, the, that a spider's alive, maybe you'll accept Gary's uh, version of that spider is just in a suffering position. I don't. Okay, I've seen spiders working on their webs. I've seen spiders just hanging out. You know, this constant struggle of wild animals have a constant... No, they don't. Sometimes they fall into real tragedies that we with the society can avoid. But, you know, most of the time they don't. They just live their lives. They might have a shorter lifespan because they're in medical science, but they have tons of time for just enjoyment, hanging out, absorbing sunlight. And if you see animals, they do all of that. They lie in the sun. They, they enjoy this gift better than humans. See, that's our problem. We had this forebrain to, to not enjoy it. Okay, so they might be the ones with the gift, and we're the ones with a sort of a burden.
that we need to make a gift.